Facebook sisters, Facebook family, Facebook friends, Facebook community. My name is Dagmar Khan and I am going to share with you and talk to you today both my personal story but even more importantly the relationship between trauma, trauma that lives inside of the body, trauma that has not been healed and integrated and its impact on women's health, women's sexuality, women's relationship to her body, and even women's intimate relationships and her finances. Hi, Jessica, what's up? Lovely to have you here. Hi, Erika, so lovely to have you here. So as you are jumping on, I really want to sort of start this, this, this frame and this emphasis that so many people, so many women out there are really struggling in their health, in their finances, in their sexuality. And oftentimes the idea out there is that there is no interconnection, that is no you know, relationship between the different facets of women's life. And then the focus becomes on, oh, I have to fix this, oh, I have to fix that, I have to look after this and I have to heal this where in fact, by going after the trauma, by going after the source and actually healing the epicenter from where everything is, you know, impacting the other areas is the true way for a woman to live well inside of her body and actually experience incredible love, incredible intimacy in her relationships and truly focus on living her best life. So when it comes to trauma, as I already shared, there are a lot of areas on women's life that can be impacted. And I would really love to start by actually sharing with you all these different areas and what women can be experiencing in her life and in her body and in her sexuality when trauma lives inside of herself. So when it comes to sexuality, one of the things that is very, very common is when a woman is in a relationship, so she is married or she's with a partner, oftentimes she lives in a sexless relationship. So it's either her who is desiring her husband, desiring her partner, but her partner is resisting her and that is creating so much pain inside of her. Or she herself carries you know, a lot of trauma and as a result, she might experience a lot of shame around sexuality, a lot of disgust around sexuality. She might be getting very triggered during sex and as a result, she is literally pushing her partner, her lover away, which is creating so much pain in normally very, very good relationships. And as a result, there are, you know, people living together for five, seven, ten years. They're normally like deeply in love, but they are incredibly disconnected from one another because of this core wound and core pain. Uh, Erica asked, why do you think women are in sexless marriage? Well, I just shared that. It's either that no for sex is coming from her because of her own trauma and as a result shame and disgust around sexuality and her body or uh, the no is coming from her partner, from her husband and as a result, you know, like this is actually causing trauma in her own system and in her body. Now, if a woman is, you know, single, she's not in relationship, oftentimes uh, the impact of trauma on her sexuality wounds her so much so she does not feel safe with sex. She gets very triggered around sex. She has, you know, like deep fear around penetration. And what does that do for her? It actually prevents her from dating. It prevents her from what she usually, most women want to be in a good relationship, but makes her terrified of going out there and, you know, like really uh, expressing her radiance, her beauty, her magnetism, and is keeping her locked in her bedroom, is keeping her locked in her shell because she is so deeply scared of a sexual intimacy. Now, on a physical level, on a health level, a lot of women who carry sexual trauma, they struggle with the chronic lower back pain. 
And I'm not talking here about like a little twingle or a little stiffness here and there. I'm talking an ongoing lower back pain that maybe has already put them under a knife of a surgeon or they are candidate for a surgery or maybe you know their chronic lower back pain is actually preventing them from doing the exercises or the activities they really want to pursue like pilates and running and yoga and they're just kind of living on the edge constantly scared to do some wrong move or some wrong position because their back can go off uh, when it comes to chronic lower back pain they also might be in a space where they are like literally dependent on their therapist, they are dependent on their chiropractor, and they go to a chiropractic office once a week, like every single week, and in between the sessions, in between the treatments, they are terrified of what might happen or what could possibly happen, and you know, like really their life is put on hold. They are in chronic state of fear. Amandala says, you speak everything I think. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. I'm really glad that this is resonating and this is like hitting home for Amandala. Now, another thing when it comes to health and a physical pain is so many women with sexual trauma suffer with sacroiliac joint pain. So like sacrum pain, hip pain, sacroiliac joint pain. And it's often like unexplainable type of pain. They might be going from acupuncturist to reflexologist to physical therapist and no one seemed to be giving like the root cause of what is happening in their body. Another very common are chronic digestive issues. And these are usually women who, you know, have a good diet. They are having green smoothies and, you know, watching their intake of sugar and not flaring their system with caffeine. I mean, they're focused on a good diet, but they still struggle so much with bloating and abdominal cramps and like indigestion and so much belly pelvic discomfort. And the fourth one that I see a lot are really painful menstruations. So super painful menstrual cramps, so much so that every month for one or two days, woman has to spend in the bed on a couple of Panadols with hot water bottle. She is pretty much not functional and she often even misses, you know, one or two days from work. She misses on earning money because the pain is so so intense. Now, when it comes to financial peace, this is, I would say, one that's really misunderstood, but one that I see with my clients and with my students in my online courses, so it is so, so, so common. So when it comes to finances, woman with sexual trauma, she usually has, uh, she, like she's putting a good work out there. So if she is in employment, she's usually very loyal to her employer. She is doing really good work. She is putting a lot of value uh, to her company or to, to her employer. If she's a business owner, if she's an entrepreneur, she might be putting like really good work out there. She will be probably creating a beautiful art or you know, offering powerful transformation for her clients. But for whatever reason, she either cannot get enough clients or she is terrified of charging higher prices or uh, in employment scenario, she is really scared of like setting strong boundaries that will allow her to actually get paid what she is worth and um, uh, get the financial rewards that she truly, truly deserves. So she is in a place where it's like she is doing beautiful work, but she's constantly struggling with not earning enough, with not having enough money in her bank account. And even sometime when maybe an unexpected lump sum of money comes into her life, something happens, something unexpected happens, and the money a little just like flushed out of her account. So that is this inability of uh, keep finances in place or earn what she is worth and you know what she truly, truly deserves. 
So before I go into the next section of this, I would love to know whether you have any questions around the sexuality, the health, the relationship, the finances, or any of your thoughts that are that might be coming up for you around this topic and this relationship between the different faces or uh, facets of woman's life and how it relates and actually connects to this one central piece, which is unhealed and unintegrated sexual trauma. So, The real pain uh, or the real sort of like a mental struggle when it comes to healing sexual trauma is, I would say, threefold. There are kind of the three most common things that I hear women say over and over again as it relates to this topic. So the first one is, I don't understand why this is happening to me. I don't understand why this is happening to me. And this is usually a woman who knows that she has been either raped or sexually abused, but the sexual trauma might have happened in her life maybe 10, 15 years ago. And 10, 15 years, she has, I wouldn't say been okay, but kind of okay. And then now she's at a place where things are just like falling apart, one thing after the other, and she literally cannot get handle on her life. And she's in this mental space of, I don't understand why this is happening to me. I mean, I don't understand why I have back pain. I don't understand why I feel disgusted by sex. I don't understand why I'm so scared of, you know, being naked with my partner who I love so much. Like, why all of this pain now, why all of this suffering now, 15 or 10, 15 years after my abuse? So this is one mental state that's very, very common. The second one is, I don't know why I'm stuck. I don't know why I'm stuck. And this is usually a woman who, again, like is aware that she had sexual trauma in the past and she has been actively in therapy. So maybe she is uh, in counseling or in therapy space for last 10 years. She is taking really good care of her body. She's someone who does, you know, two yoga classes a week. She's meditating on daily basis. She maybe goes to like mind, body, spirit festival every year. She drinks green juices. And like she has the understanding that she needs to do her work. She needs to heal. She needs to be, she needs to take a good care of herself. And up till this point, she has been doing everything with the greatest intention to truly heal. But 15 years into the process, she is like on a sexuality piece, still where she was 15 years ago. Maybe when she has a sex with her partner or with a lover, there are like these super painful memories and triggers coming up for her. And as a result, she gets like totally terrified. She doesn't feel safe in her body. She either like pushes her partner away or like she locks in a ball and she starts to cry and shake or she gets so disconnected from her body. She pushes all these feelings down into her system and she escapes into the mind land or into some space of fantasy because feeling herself is so incredibly hard and uncomfortable. And she's like, I don't get it. I've done so much healing work on myself. Why do I feel still so much shame and so much pain and so much disgust around my sexuality? And the third very common belief is that I am broken. I am broken. This is something I hear all the time. And one of the challenge with this is that when woman feels deep down that she is broken, 
she usually believes that all of that is happening only for her. That literally there is no woman out there that goes through the same pain, that goes through the same struggles, that feels so, you know, terrified of sexual intimacy, that lives in sexless marriage, that deals with chronic lower back pain and has to go to chiropractor every single week. She is in the space where I am the only one on this planet of 7 billion of people that I'm going through this. And this is one of the big challenges with trauma. Trauma that lives in the body makes us believe, makes us isolated from everyone and everything. And we believe that all of that is happening only to us. So the brokenness is exclusive to ourselves. But of course, nothing could be farther from truth. There are millions and millions of women on this planet who live in sexual trauma and are going exactly through the same as you might be going now, right now, right here. So Amandala asks, can trauma affect emotional and physical attraction? Yes, absolutely. So uh, when trauma lives in the body, it does impact on the let's say the kind of men that we feel attracted to or certain emotional traits or, uh, you know, the way he relates to us, the way he connects to us. So it's very, very common for women who are getting sexual trauma that they get into relationships or they build or develop relationships with men that are bringing up over and over again their core wound around insecurity and unworthiness and unsafety or jealousy or not good enoughness. And it is not until trauma is fully healed and fully digested and fully integrated that we literally have this subconscious and unconscious possibility for creating or stepping into a relationship that truly allows us to feel deeply loved and deeply safe and, you know, foster this deep sense of belonging. So great, great question, Amandala. Thanks for asking that. So with all of this, you know, feeling broken and feeling stuck and feeling like I am the only one, uh, you might have a sense of, will this ever change? Especially if you already have been putting your best foot forward and you have been doing everything you possibly can to heal, but you're still in the place of pain and suffering and loneliness and isolation. And what I want you to know is that there is an absolute, absolute possibility for you to heal, to feel safe in your body, to experience pleasure with sexuality, to experience safety with sexual intimacy, to have flourishing relationships, and to really feel your own sense of word and self-love and connection. And it truly connects to actually healing sexual trauma, not in your mind or not through, you know, drinking green juice or sitting in a counseling chair every week, but actually going into your body and doing sexual healing in an embodied way. Doing sexual healing in an embodied way. So... What I want to share with you is a premise, a framework of how you can heal a sexual trauma in under three months while deeply falling in love with your body without spending the rest of your life in a counseling sessions. How you can heal sexual trauma in under three months while deeply falling in love with your body and not needing to spend rest of your life in a counseling sessions. Which kind of takes me to uh, definitely acknowledging some of the deeper pain points that are at play when it comes to sexual trauma, when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to intimacy, when it comes to all of this. And... 
one of the deep pain that I'm seeing and that I'm really feeling on such a deep level from many of my clients is the sense of being terrified of deeply connecting with themselves. So it's almost like this, oh, it's okay for me to, you know, process my pain in a counseling session. It's okay for me to drink a green juice. It's okay for me to read a book on personal development. But like feeling my body, feeling my vagina, fostering embodied safety in my vagina, that feels so incredibly scary. But here is the thing, the deep fear of feeling yourself is ultimately, it's ultimately what's keeping you stuck and what's preventing you from truly diving into your body and actually doing the sexual healing process that truly heals the core and the epicenter of sexual trauma. Another very, very deep pain for women who are in relationships, who are refusing their partner sexually, is this deep embarrassment about her body, deep embarrassment around the size of her thighs or the shape of her belly, and like this incredible vulnerability that comes up around, I am not good enough. I might be aging, you know, me and my partner might have been together 10, 15 years. My body has changed since the time we got married. Now that we have two, three kids, of course my body looks different, but I am pushing this pain down because I'm terrified of what will happen if I truly open to him. And if I like stand in my nakedness and in my not uh, perfectness in front of him, he might reject me, he might not love me, and I'll feel so incredibly broken. This is real. This is so real for so many women. And this deep pain also tremendously relates to the fact that so many women are hiding themselves in, and hiding their bodies in, you know, baggy clothes, or they're hiding their faces under layers and layers of makeup, or they're hiding their realness by going for a Botox injection every single year, or they are like hiding from what they are truly hungry for, which is deep intimacy with a man, deep intimacy with a lover, deep intimacy with a husband, they're hiding by working and smoking and drinking wine and watching stupid shows and, I don't know, wasting time on Netflix. They are hiding from it. But deep down, deep down, this is what they both want and they're also so terrified of that. And I know all of this because I'm going to be honest. I've been there myself. I've been through all of this myself and I know the pain and I know the struggling and I know the isolation and I know the realness of this. So back on, today is Friday, so back on Tuesday, I have done Facebook Live on the story of kidnapping uh, of the biggest wound of my life, which is how I healed my own mother wound and really uh, recreated safety in my womb and in my sexuality to become pregnant and to become mother again. Uh, but today I want to share with you something different, something that really relates to all of this that we are discussing here today, which is the following. So my sexual abuse that happened between the age of 12 to 15 is not something that I begin to deal with until kind of early to mid-20s. And the main reason for that is that up till that point, I did not have the environment, the environment of like home, because up till that point, my life was a total chaos. 
I had no sense of home. I have no sense of belonging. I have no sense of, I can actually put my roots down and begin to do some healing. So as I started to, you know, go into counseling and sit in my therapist chair week after week, I begin to open up around the pain of my abuse, around the pain of my marriage, the wounds that my husband brings up for me and how I'm unable to deal with them, how we trigger the hell out of each other. And, you know, I love him to the core and he loves me to the core, but we are just arguing all the time. And anytime we argue, anytime he brings this core wound in me around what does it feel like to be loved as a woman? What does it feel like to belong in a loving relationship? Anytime he does that, all I do is I hide under the bed. I'm 25 at that time. I hide under the bed like a small girl. I lock myself in the bedroom and I tell him to fuck off. I can't see him. I can't see him. The pain is so real. The pain is so real because anytime my husband triggers me, all of that sexual trauma just comes up and I feel rejected. I feel unloved. I feel unsafe. I feel like my whole life, my whole thing is going to fall apart and I want to die in that instance. So here I am going to a therapy session week after week after week and my therapist is listening to me. He is providing safe space for me. He is, you know, allow me to cry and shake and sob and whatever, but I am not moving forward. I find myself four years later, I'm in still the same space in my marriage. I am still triggered anytime my husband looks at another woman. I still feel unworthy when suddenly I'm no longer size 12, like I was when I was 14, but now I'm size 14 in jeans and I feel horrible about myself. And then I get the worst pain of my life. One day I'm standing in a business meeting center and I'm meeting like local entrepreneurs and we are talking about, you know, weather and business environment and like doing some partnerships together. And I get this throbbing pain, like this electricity zapping through my left leg. And as I'm standing there and trying to put on a happy face, I feel like my whole left leg is getting numb and I am losing, I'm losing a sense of like the leg is mine. It's like my leg is being cut off of me while I'm standing there and talking to other women. And I'm like trying to pivot and shake and a little bit adjust, but the feeling is not going away. So, I excuse myself from the group and I kind of rushed to the bathroom. I don't know even how I rushed because I felt I'm not able to walk on my left leg. And I kind of touch myself, I check my leg, I look in the mirror, I'm like, what's happening? I don't understand this, what's going on? So I quickly call my husband, he said he's in work at that time and I'm like, baby, I don't know what is happening, but like I am losing sense of my leg. I feel like I can't feel my leg and I feel like I'm losing my leg. And he kind of says, what are you talking about? I'm like, look, I mean it, this is real. So he says, look, jump in the taxi and go to the hospital and let's see what's going on. So somewhat, I kind of pull myself out of the hotel room. I get a taxi that's in front of the hotel and I rush to the hospital. Now, they take, take me to ER, they start to palpate the leg, they check my heart, they check my, uh, they check my organs, um, they ask me about what happened and how I'm feeling, they ask me to stand and take a few steps, and as the time is progressing, I am collapsing on the leg more and more and more, and I'm literally like super healthy and strong to the right leg, but the left leg is literally like dying under me. So all of the checking goes until late night and then pretty much close to midnight, they tell me that I have massive, massive damage in my sciatic nerve and I have major herniation of my L4, L5 
and I will probably need surgery like as soon as possible because the compression of the nerve is so severe that that's what I'm feeling. I'm literally losing the sense of my leg. And when doctor leaves the ambi leaves leaves the space, I'm like, what's going on in here? Like at that point, I was someone who was yoga teacher. I was someone who was teaching others how to live well in their bodies. I was someone who was showing people how to prevent pain. I was someone who was l working with people with chronic back pain, chronic pelvic pain, chronic digestive issues. And I felt in myself that I'm doing a really, really good job taking care of my body. So what is this thing of I am losing my nerve? I need surgery? I might not be able to walk ever again? My mind felt like it's going in a million pieces. I felt ashamed of myself. I felt terrified of the future. I did not trust the surgeon that's going to perform surgery because I knew from my clients up till that point what can happen after unsuccessful surgeries. And I tell you this, I was terrified. And my husband left the hospital room and I spent the night in the hospital and I was reflecting on a lot of things in my life. I was reflecting on my sexual abuse. I was reflecting on the pain of being separated from my son for 18 months when he was kidnapped. I was reflecting on five years on being in the therapy office. I was reflecting on everything I know about body and joints and preventing pain. And I said to myself that night, I cannot live like this. I teach others how to be pain free. And here I am broken to pieces, lonely, ashamed, disgusted by myself. I can't do this anymore. I have to figure out a way. I have to figure out the way out of this misery. I have to figure out the way out of this abuse and trauma and brokenness and isolation, all of it. And something deep awakened in me. Something deep awakened me. I said, enough of this bullshit, enough of this life. I will do whatever it takes to make healing available in my body. I am not going to go under surgeon's knife. I know that under all of this is still the sexual trauma that lives in my body and it's eating my body alive. And I will heal it. I will release it. And I will restore my humanity. I am worth it. I am going to restore my humanity. So next day, I sign up for acquiring master's degree in human sexuality. Or I can say the equivalent of master's degree in human sexuality. I went on and started to study nervous system trauma resolution and human sexuality and everything I was learning I was applying and feeling and embodying in myself every step of the way so I began to do deep breath work practices to release tension and all the wounding and patterns of disconnection I began to do JDAC practices to foster deep sense of safety in my vagina, in my cervix, in my womb. I began to release this deeply held fear that was living in my sacrum and in my lower back and in my pelvis and replace that with a sense of safety and connection in my midline. And when I was making love with my husband, 
I was asking him over and over again to foster a sense of deep connection and deep intimacy so I can feel safe and I can feel deeply connected in the most intimate moments of my life. Now, three months into this process, I went back to my surgeon that was supposed to perform the surgery to get an MRI. And when he looked at it, he looked in my eyes and he said, you no longer have herniation. I don't know what you're doing. You did not have the surgery, but your disc is absolutely healed. Tell me, Dagmar, what are you doing? So I shared with him some of my secrets of sexual healing and trauma resolution. He was deeply impressed. And he said, well, keep doing what you're doing. The same that we could uh, achieve with surgery, you have achieved with your own healing and with your own process. That to me, stepping from his office was nothing short of remarkable. And as I was walking out of his office feeling like overjoyed and like so connected with the process that I'm creating for myself and the implication that's going to have on my life, on relationship to my husband, on how I feel in my body, on my sexuality, was like boom, 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 boom. This is powerful. This is so incredibly powerful. And pretty much four or five weeks afterwards, me and my husband have conceived baby. Now, if you don't know that story, you definitely need to watch my Facebook live from Tuesday where I talk about how I healed my own mother wound and what it took me to feel safe, to become pregnant and really step into the uncertainty of motherhood. And fast forward two years. Yesterday was kind of a bittersweet moment for me because my baby boy has celebrated his first birthday. Yesterday was my son's first birthday. And to look into his eyes, knowing the healing that I have done on myself and how much I needed to go in in order for him to be in this world in first place was nothing short of overwhelming. I kissed him yesterday, I looked in his eyes, I hugged him, and I felt this such a deep gratitude inside of me for the journey that I have decided to go on so he can exist. So my body can have the strength to go through pregnancy and I feel safe in my sexuality to say yes to conception and yes to pregnancy and for him to be growing and flourishing in a state of deep, deep love. So I'm going through your comments. Brian says, agree, once you touch the bag, you can never go back. <laughs> That's one of my favorite quotes for sure. <laughs> Gorgeous. So when it comes to this process, you might be thinking, well, this sounds amazing, Dagmar, but I don't think this is going to work for me because my story is different, my place is different, my you know experience of everything is different, or I am different. This is not going to work for me. The powerful thing and the beautiful thing about this is, and this comes from research, is to help us understand that sexual trauma does not live in the thinking mind. That's why working with therapists, it's helpful, but it does not heal the core of sexual trauma. Because sexual trauma lives in the deep mind. It lives on an unconscious level of the mind. And the bridge into the unconscious is always the body. 
working with the body, body sensation, and body meant doing a body-based work is how you are able to actually get to a place where trauma lives and through specific processes help release it in a gentle and loving way and actually restore your body with qualities that you most desire, whether that's self-love, whether that's safety, whether that's intimacy with yourself. But going through the body is scientifically proven to fully resolve trauma. And literally what happens when we resolve trauma? We bring ourselves back to aliveness, emotional aliveness, physical aliveness, financial aliveness, sexual aliveness, aliveness is on the opposite side of trauma. So incredibly beautiful. Now, the second thing I hear a lot with, you know, doing sexual healing in order to, uh, in order to heal sexual trauma is that I am terrified of my sexuality or I'm terrified of my body or like feeling my body or going into my sexuality, which is so, so, so common. So here is the thing. I want to share with you a story of one of my clients uh, whose really, whose experience is truly, truly remarkable. So she is, uh, she lives in Australia and she is an absolute darling, like warming, funny, loving, connected, beautiful, beautiful woman in her 30s. And she is married to her husband for last 10 years. Now, their relationship is beautiful. They are sweethearts. They love each other to pieces. But in 10 years of their marriage, they never had sex. Shocking. They love each other to pieces, but in 10 years, they never consummated their marriage. And the reason for that is that she is terrified or she was terrified of sex. So when I suggested doing sexual healing work in order to heal a fear around sexuality so she can make love to her husband, she was like, what are you doing to me? Like, I can't do this. I'm just so afraid. And the power of all of this is that all this fear, this is too much. I won't be able to do it. Uh, I can't take it. Oh my goodness. It's a story that lives inside of the head where the invitation for sexual healing is connecting on a basic level with the sensations inside of her body. So I begin to really support her in connecting to her body in a safe and loving way. And in that safe and loving space, release this fear that has been holding her back from being sexual with her husband. And guess what? It feels safe for her. The fear is completely going away. And she, for the first time in her life, for the first time, 10 years of marriage, she's like, oh, I can have sex with my husband. I feel safe and okay about it. So going into your sexuality can be the most beautiful and safe and intimate way that will actually allow for melting and moving of the fear away. Now, the third one, the third very, very common emotional fear around this is, what if my husband, my partner, my lover won't approve? I see so many women struggle with this. Let's say they are living in sexless marriage and the sexlessness is coming from them because of their own trauma. They desire their partner, their partner desires them, but there is this trauma living in them. And then they are offered going through the sexual healing process, but they are like, oh, 
My husband will make joke of me. He will laugh at me. He won't approve of me. I already done this, 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 and it didn't work. So I might spend another a whole bunch of money and energy and time on doing this. And my husband will laugh at me even more, which at the core is so incredibly disempowering because first and foremost, you are giving power of your healing away by saying, even though it's your darling and it's your lover, he's not you. And first and foremost, you have the power to make your own choices. One of the challenge with trauma living in the body is it's stealing our choices away. Sometimes it can make us choiceless or we believe that we only have one choice and one thing or one way of being. So the importance here is to recognize it that this is what trauma does to us. It does to our decision making and then understand that my husband is not in charge of my sexuality. If I want to heal my own sexual trauma, I need to get in charge of my own sexuality because ultimately that will allow me to release the shame, the disgust, the pain, the disconnection, the, all of it so I can restore sexual intimacy in my relationship. And let me tell you this, restoring sexual intimacy in your relationship is nothing short of sensational. It is the most exquisite, the most beautiful, the most special thing you can ever offer to your humanity. So what is the cost of all of this if you, you know, stay where you are? and you don't decide to move ahead because trauma is keeping you locked where you are today. Six months from now on, two years from now on, five years from now on, you can still be so struggling with finances. You can still be, you know, going through horrible outbursts of back pain and pelvic pain and sacrum pain. You can still be curled in the bed every single month when you have your menstrual cycle and um, be away from work and your loved ones because the pain is so, so, so real. You can still be going through this massive isolation with your lover or with your husband because you are so ashamed and disgusted with yourself, with your body, with your sexuality. You can still be repressing your sexual impulse and your sexual desires that you do want to offer to your partner, to your lover, but he is rejecting you. So you are pushing everything down. And if you don't say yes to this process today, no matter how long it will take, two, three months, five months, six years from now, and you can still be in the same place. But I don't want this for you. I want something truly, truly magical and beautiful and healing and safe and intimate and supportive for you. So what I have done is taken the best practices and best tools from my highly sought trauma resolution work that I normally offer only to my high-end one-on-one mentoring clients and I'm extrapolating them and bringing them to a free three-day challenge called Intimacy Ignited, happening on the 4th, 5th, and 6th of December. The value of this challenge is 497 euros. And inside of the challenge that once again is absolutely free, you will learn the exact step-by-step process that my high-end clients follow in order to move from space of living with sexual trauma to a place of full physical health, physical vibrancy, emotional health, emotional vibrancy, and truly fostering deep love with themselves, deep love with their body, and creating a connection with their partner that truly fosters the greatest level of fulfillment, love, and connection. Yes, Brian says, love the name Intimacy Ignited. Yes, so Intimacy Ignited is your opportunity to truly say goodbye to sexual trauma, 
I want my self, I want my body, I want connection to myself, and I want and I am ready to heal my body in the most meaningful way because I deserve it and I am so incredibly worth it. So here is my invitation to you. If you're ready to say yes, the greatest level of healing of your body, comment the word challenge in the comment section below and I will send you an exclusive invitation to this three-day challenge that is once again starting on the 4th of December and is the step-by-step -step process for completely healing your sexual trauma and restoring your humanity, your sexuality, your aliveness and deepest love with yourself. How about stepping into the holiday season feeling so good inside of your skin that every single day you wake up and it's like, yes, baby, I am alive and I'm so excited to live in this body and live this precious and meaningful life. Now, I want to make sure that you don't leave people that are close to your heart or maybe close to your womb behind. So if you have sisters, if you have friends, if you have cousins, if you have acquaintances who you know struggle with sexual trauma, please invite them to see this video, watch this video, comment the word challenge so they too can get this exclusive invitation to the Intimacy Ignited and with me and a group of 500 women who will be taking this very special challenge, they'll be able to heal their body heal their psyche, and restore their incredible aliveness. I am so excited to be stepping into the challenge with you and truly make you feel alive again. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here with me today. And Intimacy Ignited is starting on the 4th of December. And I am so much looking forward to sharing it with you. So comment the word challenge and I'll send you this exclusive invite and will start your greatest connection with Intimacy Ignited December 4th to 6th.